Uh, well, if you listen to Joe Biden's Homeland Security chief, there is no crisis at the border. We are not saying don't come. We are saying don't come now because we will be able to deliver um, a safe and orderly process to them uh, as quickly as possible. Do you believe that right now there's a crisis at the border? I think that the, uh, um, the answer is no. Uh, I think there is a challenge at the border that we are managing and we have our resources dedicated to, to managing it. If there is a safe way to do this, to get reporters down there, to show the American people the conditions there where these unaccompanied children are being held, would you allow that? Um, uh, I'm happy to uh, take a look at that. To, uh, I owe it to my people to understand the situation and the reasons uh, why access was denied. I will share with you uh, something, um, uh, another um, uh, principle to which I uh, intend to hear throughout my uh, tenure, and that's openness and transparency. Yeah, just don't come now. Then there's no crisis at the, the southern border. Well, that's where about 90% of heroin and opioids cross and fentanyl come into this country from our southern border. Uh, you know, we have highway border patrol agents now. They've had to send reinforcements to the border amid the surge in, in migrants. We see what's happening now with kids in cages. They've now been put in cargo containers with bars on the windows, but they do have pictures of butterflies inside. So we've gotten rid of the Biden Obama era kids in cages problem. And one Texas Democrat, uh, Vincente Gonzalez, a Democrat, saying the border crisis could be a catastrophe for my district and my party. Actually saying that. An Arizona sheriff saying, yeah, there is a border crisis. And these border policies are, are just absolute failure, but it's all part of the plan to get to what? Full-on amnesty and open borders. And then they won't allow the media to even tour migrant children facilities, you know, the cargo containers were bars on the tiny windows because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, I guess they want to put up more pictures of more butterflies. You know, Joe Biden yesterday saying Mexico is an, is an equal as he dismantles Trump's immigration policies. In other words, legal immigration, and we replace it with more illegal immigration. Uh, so we'll see whether or not this amnesty bill, I guess I mean, that'll be the executive fiat number, you know, 4,822 of Joe Biden. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, anyway, joining us now is Derek Maltz. He's a former agent in charge of the DEA Special Operations Division. Discusses what's really happening at the southern border. Well, you heard the DHS secretary tell us there's no crisis at the southern border. Who's right? Well, hey, doing, Sean. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, just talk to the experts. Listen to the people that work on the border. We have a fentanyl methamphetamine crisis like we've never seen. 81,000 dead Americans in a 12-month period from fentanyl. We have kids dying all over the country. But when you run a uh, campaign with radical immigration plan, the whole world is listening. These people are watching the moves, right? So the leader of the United States is telling people, you know, Free insurance, open borders, right? Catch and release is done, right? You're going to just get the people out of the public again. You know, halting deportation, shutting down ICE. Of course you have a crisis. The beds are at like almost 100% capacity, right? You listen to the experts, there's going to be 13,000, you know, uh, children that are going to be here by May. And they're lining up. And they've been lining up ever since Trump lost the election with Biden's uh, comments about the border. So I don't know where this guy's talking about there's no crisis, Sean. It's pretty obvious we have a crisis. And they're building up new facilities, like DOD's talking about building up new tent cities, right? And, and DHS is bringing people from the northern border. I hope we don't lose track of people coming across the northern border when we ship resources because we don't have enough resources. And the morale is terrible, by the way, Sean. Well, I, how could it be any good? So we, we were up to the point it was about 90% of the heroin and now fentanyl, and you rightly point out methamphetamine crossing that border into the United States. Is it about 90% of what comes into this country? Because we're losing uh, quite a number of people every, every day of uh, every year to the opioid crisis we have in the country. Then you look at the way children, 
Do you ever think that you go from kids in cages, blame Donald Trump, even though Biden and Obama built the kids in cages, they built the cages. Now they're putting him in cargo ship containers with bars on the window. And now we've got, what, 13, 14,000 more kids expected uh, oh, in just a few days. That's not going to be too good either. Well, Sean, the other thing, too, let's not forget about this, this journey that these people are making to come to America for a better life. Look at the January incident. When 19 people, including these Guatemalans, I think there were 17 Guatemalans and two Mexicans, they were mutilated, burned up. Their bodies were so bad they couldn't even identify them. And they made a 2,000 mile journey to this, to the, you know, to the American border. And people aren't talking about all the tractor trailers that are coming in with these young kids that are suffocating, that are dying in the tractor trailers from the heat, right? But going back to the drugs, Sean, the other problem we have is China's influence with the Mexican cartels. China is now playing a very significant role, not just with the precursor chemicals, but they're dominating now all the money laundering services businesses for the cartels. So they're getting the chemicals from China, they're getting the, uh, the money services taken care of. So business is booming, right? As families are just loved ones, over 210 a day, and they're just coming in across the border setting up command and control throughout America. You have El Mencho, you have the Sinaloa cartel, where they're setting up in the hub cities and now spreading out throughout America. The Mexican oxy pills are booming. We have unprecedented levels of seizures. One pill is killing kids immediately, Sean. It's a crisis like we've never seen, but we're not even talking about it in the media, right? That's the other thing. I didn't hear Joe Biden bring that up to the president of Mexico yesterday, right? That was a, a sweeper of a of a meeting, by the way, Sean, I've been in plenty of government meetings. That was a disaster in itself, the meeting, watching this guy talk to another leader where we have these problems on our border. It, it's so transparent. You just need to open your eyes, sort of like the, the full-on denial that there was violence in American cities every single night when buildings are ablaze and rocks and bricks and bottles and Molotov cocktails are being launched at, you know, police officers and some 2,500 injured, 30 uh, people died in the process of these things and the media mob and Democrats, oh no, no, they were all peaceful. No, they weren't peaceful. Um, and they want us to just deny the, the reality of all this. You know, I look at what's happening on the board. I've been down there at least 14 times myself. And I look at what's happening, I've seen it with my own eyes. And I, I've been to the drug warehouses as well, floor to ceiling, nothing but drugs and a stench that is the worst you've ever smelt in your life. Uh, very, very frightening times. And to just deny the reality, it's, it's pretty unbelievable here. Now, are the people that are coming in, are they wearing masks? Are we checking if they have radical associations or making any type of health check? Are we... Are we insisting that people be able to take care of themselves financially if they get into the country? Well, see, that's another whole issue, Sean. I mean, we have like, we, we have our schools closed throughout America, but yet we're just welcoming these people in, right? What is the processes? I think I know right now HHS is just worried about getting these kids on planes, shipping them to cities near you, right? They're coming around America now to the cities and they're coming into these areas. They're going, they're going to be going to the schools when they reopen. And the schools are already overcrowded, right? So we don't know also, Sean, all these special interest aliens that are coming in from around the world. We saw last month when they stopped 11 Iranians, right? So we have folks from Africa, the Middle East, from Yemen, and all kinds of parts of the world. And we don't even know who's coming in because the, mm. the gotaways, Sean, what about the gotaways, right? The statistics on the CBP will estimate those that get away, right, that cross over in between the port of entries and they just run into America, they're, they're estimating like thousands and thousands of these getaways like every day. So we have a big serious issue and we're not trying to be overly dramatic, but this is going to really hurt our communities. I, I, I get calls every day from families of the fallen uh, from fentanyl, right? These families are just devastated. There's no talk in the media. Right, so you had the celebrity's uh, child who died. She's a news broadcaster out in L.A., 16-year-old kid on Snapchat. All of a sudden, people are talking about this counterfeit pill stuff. But it's, it's coming in like we've never seen before. And none of the Main Street media is talking about it. I don't understand. Well, let me it's ask you this question. Thing. So they won't let the media into the new uh, cargo, sh the cargo ship containers that they're now putting these kids in with tiny windows with bars on them. 
uh, that's claiming because of COVID protocols. Uh, so I guess those kids are, are have no adult supervision whatsoever. We can't give somebody a COVID test and allow them to go in with a camera to reassure the American people that these beautiful design cargo ship uh, containers with butterfly pictures on the walls is really a good place to put kids. I guess it gives them time to re renovate them before the uh, media finally gets in there. Yeah, yeah, remember, Sean, those were the cages under Donald Trump, right? Now they're professional facilities, right? It's all semantic. It's semantics from Washington. It's the land of the make-believe, Sean, obviously. They call it the swamp, which is absolutely accurate. But I used to call it the land of the make-believe because these people are self-serving. They care about themselves. They care about their bank accounts. But they don't care about the citizens in America and this is what we're seeing, you know, every day now. Well, get how many years, where did you do most of the, the work that you've done as a former agent in charge of the DEA Special Ops uh, Division? Where did you do most of your work? Where did you work out of? Well, we worked out in Northern Virginia, Sean. We had 30 agencies. We yeah. were synchronizing efforts, the UK, the, the Canadians, the Brits, the NYPD we brought down, going after the networks, but all around the world. But we focused primarily on the Southwest border. But we also saw cases with the Hezbollah operatives involved with trade-based money laundering with the Mexican cartels, you know, billions of dollars a year moving used cars from America into West Africa to sell, and then Hezbollah was making all this money. And the main guy was indicted for moving the proceeds of 85,000 kilograms of, of the cartel's uh, drugs. Well, here's the bottom line. Everybody now around the world knows Joe Biden just opened the borders and amnesty is, is going to be the, your reward if he can get in. Um, anyway, I appreciate it. Derek uh, Maltz, thank you. Thanks for the work you've done. We appreciate you being with us and giving us an update and telling us the truth because Biden's uh, own DHS secretary is not telling us the truth, which is sad. And it's only going to get worse. Mark my words. This is a guarantee. Now let's get to our busy telephones as we say hi to Nicole is in Idaho. Nicole, hi. How are you? Glad you called. Thank you. Thanks, John. I wanted to add to something you were saying 